Hello everyone, and welcome back to day two of Pwn to Own 2020. I'm Dustin Childs of the Zero Day Initiative. We have three attempts and one special demonstration on the schedule today. Plus, we have to crown a master of Pwn. Let's get to it. Our day began with returning Pwn to Own veteran Fifam Hong of Star Labs targeting Oracle VirtualBox. All right, let's run it. Ready? Yep. Yeah. Let's do this. It took all three attempts for a successful demonstration but his third attempt did work like a charm. There you go. There, there we go. go. Woo! Yes, nice. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Gosh. Ah, oh, man. So much drama. He combined an info leak and an uninitialized variable to execute code on the host operating system from the guest. You're making dramatic in the <laughs> This earned him $40,000 and four points towards Master of Pwn. I have to say that I am a bit afraid that the explorer will not work in the first two times, so finally it's will. So I'm right. happy now. Did you have concerns about the ZDI people running it for you? Actually, I don't see any problem here, but if I can reset in that profile and see, I can make it faster. Next up, the Floral Estate duo returned for their second event of the competition. All right. Let me know when you're ready, Abdul. Ready. Okay. This time, they had their sights set on Adobe Reader. In one of the most impressive displays of the competition, they leveraged used after free bugs in Reader and the Windows kernel to escalate the system. All it took was opening a PDF file and the entire system was compromised. Nice. Wow. Wow. Very good. Yeah. See you done. Nice. See you done. Very nice. Good job. This impressive display earned them $50,000 and five more points towards Master of Pwn. Waiting for the command shell to pop is just... That's <laughs> a little nerve wracking, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. very nerve wracking. <laughs> It's always those uh, those moments in Pwn to Own that you uh, that you never forget. <laughs> in the final official entry of Pwn to Own 2020, the Synactive team targeted the VMware workstation with the guest to host Escape. Come on! <laughs> ah! Done All right. Unfortunately, they couldn't successfully demonstrate their exploit in the allotted time. <sighs> However, upon disclosure. We did find the bug to be valid and purchased it through the regular ZDI program. We hope to see more from these researchers in the future. For a special bonus, ZDI's own Lucas Leong demonstrated a guest to host escape in Oracle VirtualBox. He leveraged an oob read for an info leak and a use after free bug for code execution. You can watch a video of the demonstration over on our YouTube channel. And that allows us to award our Master of Poem. It was a tighter race than previous years, but Richard Zhu and Amat Kama of Fluoroacetate were again crowned the Master of Pwn. Congratulations. We look forward to seeing more of you in the future. Amazing Thank you. feeling. Uh, well, when, we, when we first started out, we never could have imagined that we could have, we could get Master of Pwn, so it's a, it's a big honor. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> uh, talk me through your last exploit a little bit. So uh, that's kind of a scary one uh, from like, especially consumer perspective, because you open a PDF and it takes over your entire system, right? Yes, and everybody uses Adobe PDF Reader, basically. Right. This type of attack it has uh, serious consequences. Cool. And uh, especially since that the attack also happens so quickly, like you, you cannot react to it. Adobe Reader, it's, a, it's a used by so many people, so many companies, and uh, that, that makes them all vulnerable to potential exploits, right? So we want to be able to help them uh, Fix the fix the software, fix the bugs, and uh, have a safer uh, PDF opening experience. How was it going virtual? I guess it's easier to do it virtual, but it's more fun to be there in place. You know, when you're there on site. I'm actually uh, very impressed that everything is so smoothly. There's no network issues, no uh, connectivity issues. I hope you saw the tweet: custom hockey jerseys for Master of Pwn. Awesome. Uh, you've gotten. <laughs> Jackets before. It, was there a favorite Master of Pwn jacket sort of swag that uh, that you go? Oh, that one. That one was really great. All of the jackets are obviously uh, uh, outstanding. Uh, one one of the ones that stood out was the uh, Pwn Tour in Vancouver last year. We had the the full racing suit. <laughs> the racing, the racing suit. Yeah, suit. That was pretty good. That was good. <laughs> it was good. Yeah. 
We wanted to be sure to thank everyone who participated in this year's competition. There were definitely obstacles, but everyone was accommodating and worked with us to make Pwned Own 2020 happen. We wanted to thank the participants for trusting us with their research and allowing us to run each attempt. We wanted to thank vendors like Microsoft, VMware, Apple, Adobe, and Canonical for dialing in throughout the disclosure process. And special thanks go out to our partners Microsoft and Tesla and sponsor VMware for their continued support and assistance before and during the contest. So what are your first impressions of having the first virtual Pondo and complete? I mean, for me, it's a, it's a great relief. Um, there was a lot of stress coming into the competition because of all the changes that were going on. And, um, you know, we, we sat down before the event and kind of tried to think of all the different variables that we could control to make sure that, you know, we would have researchers, you know, from all around the world, plus vendors, plus the team spread out and all the different, you know, contingency plans we need to put in place to actually make this thing successful. And now we're here, we're here at the end of the contest and uh, and everything went really smoothly and I'm quite proud of the team for everything they pulled off. So getting to the contest itself, uh, day one, I know I have my personal favorite bug. What, what were some highlights of the research demonstrated that you all will talk about? I always love JIT vulnerabilities. Um, that's no secret or surprise because I've done a lot of work in that area. I've done presentations, I've found JIT bugs on my own. So the first attempt from day one, uh, the, the fact that it starts off the whole competition with a JIT vulnerability, I absolutely love that. Um, especially since it's, well, JIT bugs are getting harder to find in Safari right. and it's just, it's glorious. I personally like the escalations. Um, you know, all three escalations that we demonstrated the first day were pretty good, very solid. Uh, the Ubuntu one was uh, surprisingly fast and reliable. It shows that they really put in a lot of effort into the into making sure that, you know, when they were running that they would actually pop uh, pop the, the root shell or the system shell. Um, it's something that, you know, especially when we have new contestants like Manfred right. Paul coming into the contest uh, and showing something so unique and so interesting. Uh, I think it really brings light. There's a lot of people out there who would like to be involved in this remote aspect that uh, allows them to do that. Then moving into day two, we started off with a bit of drama. We got it on the third attempt. Uh, for the Oracle Virtual Box, that was cool. And then uh, again, to me, the highlight of the, the most realistic, you open a PDF, you get totally owned. That, that was a great bug. Great yeah, that, that was that was awesome. And uh, frankly, that's probably one of the best exploits for me specifically from day one and day two. I mean, we haven't been seeing, you know, reader exploits in the past couple of years coming through Pontone specifically. So this one was kind of nice to have. Uh, plus it was super reliable. It's kind of unexpected that bug is there. Uh, and the fact that you can go from just a PDF, opening a PDF to kernel level code execution, especially if you were to tie that in with either the uh, VM escapes, that, that becomes yeah. even more impactful. Okay, so thinking ahead, uh, are we going to stay all virtual or are we gonna end up back in Vancouver next year? Predictions. I mean, my prediction is, is I hope that we are back in Vancouver next year, that we're past all this stuff. But um, you know, I think we're going to look at virtual as something um, something that we're going to try to continue to do. I mean, it opens up the playing field a little bit. It allows us to get you know uh, people who aren't willing to travel or who aren't willing uh, who are unable to travel for visa reasons. Um, so it, this this has really allowed us to kind of test those out and figure out what's going on. I miss being in Vancouver this week, so hopefully we can be back here next year. For me, it's uh, I'm just happy that it's over and everything went really, really well. So, uh, uh, you know, a lot of stress going on with uh, all the changes, so it's, uh, it's good that it went well. That brings Pwn to Own 2020 to a close. It's been a great contest. We hope to see you this fall as Pwn to Own returns to Tokyo. See you then.